In 385, Pope St. Sericius issued a decree to Hamarius. This document is frequently called a letter to Hamarius. However, it was actually an authoritative decree in which Pope St. Sericius uses his apostolic authority, promulgates laws, and declares that his decree is to be circulated to and observed by all the bishops of the Catholic Church. It was, therefore, an authoritative act of the Holy See. Pope St. Sericius's decree to Hamarius is actually the oldest completely preserved papal decree in existence. Of course, there were papal decrees before Sericius's time. Sericius even makes reference to them, but his decree is the oldest one that has been completely preserved. In the decree, Pope St. Sericius makes striking statements on the necessity of infant baptism and adult baptism. He also explicitly and completely rejects the concept of baptism of desire. An examination of the Latin text demonstrates without any doubt that Pope St. Sericius and the teaching of the Catholic Church contradicted the idea of baptism of desire. Here's what he says, quote, Therefore, just as we say that the holy paschal observance is in no way to be diminished, we also say that to infants who will not yet be able to speak on account of their age, or to those who in any necessity will need the holy stream of baptism, we wish succor to be brought with all celerity, lest it should tend to the perdition of our souls, if the saving font be denied to those desiring it, and every single one of them exiting this world lose both the kingdom and life. Whoever should fall into the peril of shipwreck, the incursion of an enemy, the uncertainty of a siege, or the desperation of any bodily sickness, and should beg to be relieved by the unique help of faith, let them obtain the rewards of the much sought after regeneration in the same moment of time in which they beg for it. Let the previous error in this matter be enough. But now let all priests maintain the aforesaid rule, who do not want to be torn from the solidity of the apostolic rock, upon which Christ constructed his universal church, end quote. The Pope's words are quite clear. He completely rejects the idea of baptism of desire. He begins by speaking of the discipline to celebrate the baptism of adult converts at Paschal time. Paschal time is when the resurrection is celebrated. Since baptism is the rising from the state of condemnation to new life in Christ, see Colossians 2.12, Romans 6, 3-4, etc., it became customary to celebrate the baptism of adult converts at Paschal time, after the unbaptized catechumens had undergone a period of testing and instruction in preparation for the Christian life. As this decree and others clearly prove, the custom of delaying adult baptisms until Paschal time was not incompatible with the position, and the Church's infallible teaching, that all those preparing for baptism would indeed be lost if they died before receiving it. No one can be saved without baptism, as Jesus declared in John 3, 5, and the church infallibly teaches. God can and will keep good-willed and sincere souls alive until baptism. He is in control. The practice of baptizing adult converts at Paschal time, and the custom of an extended catechumenate, was a disciplinary one. It was not a requirement of apostolic tradition, as we see in Acts chapter 8. There we read that Philip baptized the eunuch of Candace after a very brief discussion of the basics of the Christian faith. So, while declaring that the Holy Paschal observance is to be continued, Sericius adds that if these unbaptized catechumens find themselves in any necessity at all, they are to be baptized with all celerity, that is, with all swiftness or right away. He then explains why he's insistent on this point. He declares that they must be baptized right away in any kind of necessity, quote, lest it should tend to the perdition of our souls, if the saving font be denied to those desiring it, and every single one of them exiting this world lose both the kingdom and life. End quote. Obviously, that completely rejects the concept of baptism of desire. The Pope teaches that all those who desire water baptism, but die without receiving it, will not be saved. Sericius was a father of the church. He was a saint. And most importantly for this particular point, he was a Pope. He held the authority of St. Peter and his legitimate successors. His decree proves, without any question, that the early church rejected the idea of baptism of desire. Even though the meaning of his decree is quite clear, some obstinate proponents of baptism of desire are so dishonest that they will actually claim that his decree does not contradict baptism of desire. Amazing. Many of them even have the audacity to claim that no father, saint, or pope rejected the idea of baptism of desire. That is, of course, complete nonsense and a total lie. It is demolished by the facts. Sericius's decree by itself and there are many other points we could bring forward, 
proves that the early church rejected baptism of desire. The outrageous dishonesty and misrepresentation routinely displayed by obstinate proponents of baptism of desire is mind-boggling. To further demonstrate that Pope St. Sericius's decree rejects baptism of desire, let's take a closer look at his words. In the Latin of the decree, we find the word daisy durantibus. That's the plural present participle in the dative case of the verb desidero, I desire or want. Here, daisy durantibus literally means to those desiring. The decree thus speaks directly about unbaptized catechumens desiring water baptism. In that sentence, we also find negato fonte salutari. That's an ablative absolute. That is, a phrase generally consisting of a noun and a modifying participle in the ablative case. Here, the noun is fonte from fons, meaning a fountain, a spring, a font, that refers to the font of baptism. Salutari, which means saving, is fonte's accompanying adjective in this sentence. Fonte salutari means with the saving font. Negato is a perfect passive participle. It's from the verb nego, I deny or refuse. Here, negato, a perfect passive participle in the ablative case, means having been denied. So, negato fonte salutari, the ablative absolute, literally means with the saving font having been denied. Or it could be translated into more flowing English as if the saving font be denied. Denied to whom? The Pope says, Daisy Durantibus, to those desiring it. So, the decree deals directly with cases in which the sacrament of baptism is being withheld from, or denied to, those who desire it, those who want it. In fact, in these paragraphs, the Pope uses numerous verbs to describe the situation in which people would ask for or even beg for baptism. Yet, they are all lost, he teaches, if they don't get it. The fact is that if someone is of goodwill, God will keep that person alive until baptism. He is a good, all-powerful, and just God. But the Pope's decree and the Church's teaching make it clear that no one is saved without water baptism, even those who desire it. In this context, the Pope also speaks of how such people who desire water baptism might be in the peril of a shipwreck, an enemy incursion, an illness, or whatever it might be. It could be a sudden and unexpected event that comes upon them. He refers to any kind of necessity. Yet what does he say about the fate of people in such circumstances, who desire baptism but die without having received it? He teaches that all of them lose the kingdom and life if they exit this world without water baptism. He uses the word unis quisque, which means each one of them or every single one of them, stressing the fact that there are no exceptions in this matter. If you cannot see that this completely and totally rejects baptism of desire, well, then, you're just a liar. It's also a decree from an early church pope and saint in which he invokes his supreme authority and applies his decree to the universal church. In the next paragraph, the pope emphasizes that water baptism is their only help, their only way to be saved, whether they are infants or people who desire baptism and find themselves in danger, in accidents, etc. He refers to water baptism as the unico credulitatis auxilio, that is, the unique help of faith or belief. Credulitatis, meaning of faith or of belief, is the genitive form of credulitas, meaning faith or belief. So, according to the Pope's teaching, receiving the sacrament of baptism is the unique help of faith. Receiving it is the first condition and the only way to be saved through the faith, as Scripture also teaches. There is no such thing as a faith or a belief a credulitas, that can bring a person to salvation without water baptism. It is the only way that one receives the true saving faith. That's why the church has also taught that only those who have received the sacrament of baptism are part of the faithful. The words unico auxilio are in the ablative case. They are an ablative of means connected with subveniri, that is, to be relieved. He says that those in any necessity who beg for the sacrament of baptism are to be relieved, unico auxilio, by the unique help, credulitatis, of faith. Receiving the sacrament of baptism is the only way for them to be saved. 
unico, which is a form of unicus, means unique, one and only, peerless, unparalleled. There can be no alternatives, no other kinds of baptism. Receiving water baptism is the unique, the only way to be saved, for infants, for those who desire it, for those who are in any kind of predicament, illness, necessity, etc. That's the teaching of Pope St. Sericius. That's the teaching of the Catholic Church. That's what we find in every single infallible and dogmatic decree to the Universal Church on this issue, even though God allowed errors to be taught on this matter in fallible sources and by fallible men. It's also very interesting that Pope St. Sericius's decree on this point was repeated in very similar language in numerous statements by Pope St. Leo the Great. You can find those quotations in the updated version of our Salvation Book. That means that what Sericius declared against the idea of baptism of desire and any salvation without water baptism was the repeated teaching of the popes and the apostolic see on this matter. In fact, the authority of Pope St. Sericius's decree needs to be emphasized. It was issued to the Catholic Church with the fullness of Sericius's authority. In the decree, the Pope repeatedly makes reference to his supreme apostolic office and he invokes its authority. He makes it clear that what he declares is binding. He says that his decree is to be sent to and observed by all the churches, all the bishops, and all the priests. His decree is the highest and most authoritative decree on matters of church law that a Pope can issue. And as we've seen, embedded within his law and his decree, is the teaching that all those desiring water baptism who die without getting it are lost, and that receiving the saving font of water baptism is the only way for people to be saved, whether they are infants, those who desire baptism, or those who are in any necessity whatsoever. I don't think it's just a coincidence that this particular papal decree, which completely rejects the idea of baptism of desire, and affirms the truth of the absolute necessity of water baptism for salvation, happens to be the oldest surviving papal decree in our day. For what characterizes our period, that is, the great apostasy and the final days, is the rejection of the necessity of baptism, as well as the rejection of the necessity of incorporation into Jesus Christ and the Catholic Church for salvation. It's simply a fact that in our day the false doctrine of baptism of desire is at the heart of that rejection. So, God arranged it that Pope St. Sericius's decree, which rejects the idea of baptism of desire, would be the decree that survives into the final days and stands out in our period as the most ancient so that in the period characterized by the false doctrine of baptism of desire and the denial of the necessity of incorporation into the church, the most venerable papal decree in all of history from the standpoint of age would be a decree that contains a clear rejection of the false doctrine of baptism of desire and an affirmation of the truth of Jesus Christ that no one can be saved without being born again of water and the Spirit in the sacrament of baptism. To put it another way, if someone wanted to discover what the popes and the papacy exercising the authority given by Jesus Christ to St. Peter and his successors, historically and authoritatively taught on the necessity of water baptism and the idea of baptism of desire, the oldest surviving papal decree in existence would be a good place to start, and in it one finds a clear rejection of the false doctrine. By the way, it should be noted that Pope Clement's famous epistle to the Corinthians was of course earlier than Sericius's decree. Dated to the first century in approximately the year 95, It was a good example of papal primacy and authority in the ancient church, as other documents are as well. In that epistle to the Corinthians, the Church of Rome, led by Clement, did use its authority to command the church at Corinth in various ways. That was an example of the authority of the Church of Rome over other churches in the very earliest period of church history. However, the epistle was not a decretal on points of church law in the strict sense of the term that later came to be applied to specific types of papal documents. Of those decretal letters, Pope St. Sericius's decree is the oldest one that has been completely preserved. Jesus Christ is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. The faith he revealed does not change. He promised to be with his church until the consummation of the world. Near the end, when the church is confronted with multitudes who have abandoned Catholic dogma on the necessity of the church for salvation, usually with the excuse of, quote, baptism of desire, we can look to the very beginning, to the text of the earliest papal decree that we have, and find in it a specific refutation of the false doctrine of baptism of desire. Furthermore, Sericius's decree proves an important point about the teaching of the ordinary and universal magisterium. The extraordinary magisterium, exercised, for example, in the dogmatic decrees of universal councils, 
has declared that no one can be saved without receiving the sacrament of baptism. The ordinary and universal magisterium, also being infallible, cannot, of course, contradict the extraordinary magisterium. Pope St. Sericius's decree proves that the ordinary and universal magisterium rejected baptism of desire and affirmed the truth that no one can be saved without the sacrament of baptism. For his decree, which rejects baptism of desire, was, by virtue of his order, to be taught to and repeated by all the bishops in the church. Thus, the entire church, following his decree, would be teaching what he did, that receiving the saving font of water baptism is the only way to be saved, even for those who desire it. For more on the church's teaching on the dogma outside the Catholic Church there is no salvation, and the baptism issue, see our salvation book, our video The Best Argument Against Baptism of Desire, and the other material on our website. Pope Eugene IV, the Council of Florence, quote, And since death entered the universe through the first man, unless we are born again of water and the Spirit, we cannot, as the truth says, enter into the kingdom of heaven, John 3, 5. The matter of this sacrament is real and natural water.